Welcome to Code Freedom. I'm your host, Eddie Bales. Have you ever felt stuck? Have you ever felt like there's got to be more to life than the reality that you see every day? Tune in weekly, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays as we crack the codes to freedom in every area of your life. Welcome to Code Freedom. I'm your host, Eddie Bales, and this is episode four, Designed for Success, but Programmed for Failure. Let me start by telling you a story. There was a young lady, and she cut off both the ends of the ham before she put it in the pot. So they asked her, hey, why do you cut off both ends of the ham before you put it in the pot? And she says, you know, I don't know. I always saw my mom do it that way. So they went to her mom and said, hey, why do you cut off both the ends of the ham before you put it in the pot? And she says, you know, I don't know. I always saw my mom do it that way. So they went to her mom and they said, hey, why do you cut off both the ends of the ham before you put it in the pot? And she's like, well, because I didn't have a pot big enough for the ham, so I just cut off both the ends, right? And so now you have two generations that are cutting off both the ends of the ham, and they have no idea why they do it other than they saw their mom do it. And that, my friends, is what we call a paradigm. And why is a paradigm so important? Because, you know, think of, well, let me give you a definition first. You know, it's a mental program that almost has exclusive control over our habitual behavior. Or said in a simplified way, it's how we see the world. Um, You know, think of it as glasses or frames that we're given as a child. And now, because of those frames, that's how we see the world for the rest of our lives. We grow up that way. Seeing things in a way that we saw it as a child, simply because of the frames, that we were given by someone else, usually our parents or the people that were around most often at a young age, right? Now, those frames that they gave us, they may have been right, they could have been wrong, but it was what was given to us, so that's all we know. And so that's what we end up carrying out as an adult. Um, And and by the way, let me just say this, speaking of the word habitual, Um, most of what we do every single day is based on a habit. So there's so much we do on a regular basis that we don't even think about, guys. Um, And that could be good or bad because there are some things that we potentially may be doing that doesn't serve us well, doesn't serve our family well. And we don't even know why we do it, right? So we, we may have heard some of these phrases as a child like, money doesn't grow on trees. Well, hey, there may be someone else that grew up with the different phrase as, hey, money doesn't grow on trees unless you own the tree, right? Maybe you heard this phrase, don't talk to, and you could probably finish the sentence, right? Strangers. Well, how else can you meet potential business partners or maybe a spouse or how else can we meet people if we don't meet strangers? But someone told you that in love, right? They were trying to protect you. So I get it. But at the same time, is it right or is it wrong? Who knows, right? It's the, the point that I'm making is that we were given these things and they were given to them and then it was given to them. And it, it could be something that was from seven or eight generations ago that doesn't serve us today in the best way. So Today, what we're kind of talking about is how can we change these paradigms? Because these are ideas, these are thoughts, these are images or, you know, behaviors, attitudes that we we got at a a young age. And so they're deeply embedded in what we call our subconscious, right? Our conscious mind is things that we, we actively think about, but our subconscious mind are things that we... We don't often, we don't think about, it's just, it's just ingrained in us. It's impressed upon our subconscious and we, we, we carry it out without thought because it, and by the way, the the subconscious is there to protect you. Um, It it protects you in many ways, Uh, but sometimes it, it's, it doesn't know right or wrong. It just knows what is given, right? 
And so we have to take the time and I'm going to give you a, a three-step process, right? How we can change your paradigm. Because I know for me, when I started out as an entrepreneur, I had all these isms and schisms in my head that I had to break, right? Because if you ever had self-esteem issues or if you ever had, um, you know, if you ever found yourself always having lack, if you ever found yourself in these different situations, it, it becomes a vicious cycle and you can't always break it unless you identify what it is and then break it, right? So that's the first thing. Number one is, you know, write a goal that you want to accomplish that you haven't been able to accomplish and you got to write it out in like specific detail, like get all the way down to the nitty gritty and write it out in as much detail as possible because the subconscious loves detail. Okay, so once you do that, the second thing would be to map out the associations around it. Like, how did you come up with all these thoughts? What 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 thoughts came with it? You know, like what who who is it that gave you these thoughts or these ideas or where did you hear it most? Anything that you could think of that you can associate with those thoughts that you identify. And then the third thing is figuring out why do you think that way? And why? Why, why, why? Peeling back the onion layers on it. And once you can identify some of those things, now it's time to reprogram. And it took repetition to get it there to that point. Now it's going to take repetition to break it. Right. I, I never forget there was a position that I wanted to go for, uh, that I want to qualify for in my business. And um, I, I, I was really fighting hard to get to this position. And I had to trick myself into believing because I thought it was hard, but I had to trick myself into believing that it was easy. So, you know what I did? Um, remember when we were children? And when you said the wrong thing and they made you write it over and over and over on paper, I will not, or I will not, I will not, right? Well, so what I did, I said, look, that must work if that was something that they taught us to do at a, in, in school. So let me use that and flip it around for something positive. So what I did is I said, I am, and I would affirm and write it on paper over and over and over while I was at work in the cubicle that I didn't want to be in. And you know what happened? Over time, as I would write that over and over and over, you know, a couple of things happened. I would start to get ideas. I would start to get thoughts on how I can create what I, what I was writing. But also, um, it, started to, it started to work. I started to believe it. I started to believe that it was easy. I started to believe that I was what I was writing. And guess what? I became that. And so I share that because that was a paradigm that I had to break. Now, that wasn't anything related to me being a child and, and, and learning something. Sometimes you get paradigms as adults, but most of the paradigms that are not serving us are things from childhood. Like, for instance, um, you know, money doesn't go on trees and, and things, things of that nature, those types of thought processes. Um, so identify those thoughts, identify those beliefs that we have that are limiting, uh, identify those thoughts that, that are holding us back, that don't, don't allow us to, to live in our best self. And once you identify them, write down how you want to feel, write down how you want to operate, and then start to affirm it, affirm it, say it every single day. Now, I'm going to just tell you, um, you may not see the results happen right away because again, it took this time. It took all this time for it to get into your subconscious to, to get to a place where it's now a habitual thing for you. So for us to break it, it's going to take a little bit of time, but if you affirm it and affirm it and affirm it and then say it, and then guess what? You're going to start to find evidence to support what you're saying, what you're believing. Now the belief level is up. And once your belief level goes up, the activity level, the behaviors automatically start to happen 
that cause for the right results to show, right? But these, just think about it. There's some paradigms that are not serving you, and there's some paradigms that we were taught. Now, listen, I'm not going to say all things that we were taught are bad, but I'm telling you, um, there are some things that we we do today, and again, we don't even know why we do it, and we just keep, like, I'll just give you an example. Um, there is uh, there was a girl, and uh, I'll end with this. She she watched her father, who was a developer, and this, this her dad, he always went from having money to not having money. And so, because what happened was he would he would take all, all his savings and he would go and buy up all of these properties. Or no, he would buy land. I'm sorry, he would buy land and he would build properties on this land, subdivisions, right? And what would happen is it would take a little while for all the houses to sell and for him to finally recoup his investment and have profit. So now he's rolling in the dough. He's got a bunch of money and he's buying his daughter all these gifts. And it was a cycle and she started to resent his dad, her dad because you know he was happy when he had the money um, but then when he was he when he didn't have the money, he was grouchy and he was mean and he he didn't buy gifts and things like that. And so it just kind of became this cycle that she picked up on. Um, but guess what happened? She gets older. She ends up in the same industry. And every time she gets money, all of a sudden she doesn't have it anymore. It, it leaves her quickly. And she couldn't figure out why. And then she found out that it was a paradigm. It was a paradigm because she had watched it, her dad do it. She ended up living the very thing that she resented. And you ever hear someone say, you're just like your dad. You're just like your mom. Um, you say it just like them or you, you act just like them, right? And it, sometimes it's not something that you're trying to do. It's just that you don't really have a whole lot of control over it because it's a part of who you are. It was impressed in your subconscious and you don't know why you do it. And so uh, I hope this helps everyone because I want to see us changing our paradigms so we can live an opti optimal lifestyle, that we can live life, as I always say, by design instead of by default, that we can um, operate with, uh, not just with, way that we're given, but we can truly de be designed for success and get the success that we desire instead of being programmed for failure. So I hope this help episode helps. Uh, feel free to share it with others. And um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys for listening. Uh, definitely feel free to take a screenshot of this episode, tag me in it on Instagram uh, or Facebook or wherever you find me on social media. I would love to give you a shout out. Hey, you might even get a prize. Who knows? But uh, excited that you had a chance to take a listen. I hope you got a lot of value and uh, definitely feel free to uh, give us five stars as well as a review. Uh, show us some love and we appreciate you. God bless you all and see you all over the top.